Today we're talking about being idle. What up team, lovely to have you aboard. And you know how sometimes in your life, you're not doing a fat lot of anything. You're just relaxing, chilling out, thinking, being. What? Well, as it happens, the same is also true of web apps. We talked previously about responses and we've talked about animations. And today, because we're talking about the rail model, we've hit the eye of rail idle. And the thing about idle is it's a bit different to the others because of the fact that it's about the gap. So, I mean, if you're a musician or you've uh, done anything to do with art, you'll also recognize this idea of gaps of the void. See what, there's a gap there. Honestly, it's hilarious. Just take all the time you need. And the thing about the gap is it's really important. When the user is not interacting with our web apps, or they're not scrolling, they're not going from one section to another, they're just maybe reading the content on the page, that's our opportunity to do something non-essential, hopefully, but, you know, something that we'd like to get done, maybe preloading the next section or maybe lazy loading some images, that kind of thing. Now, let's think about this. How would you detect that the user is not doing anything? It seems like you're trying to detect the absence of something, the absence of work, the absence of a click or a touch or a scroll or that the main thread is available for work. And honestly, it's not that easy. There isn't really an API for that, or certainly there wasn't an API for that up until a few years ago. So what are you gonna do if there's no API for detecting a gap, the, the void between work? Well, you're just gonna go ahead and do the work, aren't you? You're not gonna particularly bother about it. You just gotta get it done, so you may as well get it done. But there is an API in Chrome and Firefox that you can use and it's called Request Idle Callback. Request Idle Callback is really an interesting API in that it looks like Request Animation Frame, which I've talked about previously. Oh yeah. Uh, except that what it does is it looks for gaps in the main thread. So if you remember previously, we talked about Jank and how Jank is this idea that there's uh, an interruption to say something like an animation and it just feels wrong. And what we discovered was that if you uh, introduce too much work on the main thread then you sort of halt the world while that works completing and it gives you that stuttering that juddering that jank feel well imagine that you're well behaved and you've managed to get all your work so that it fits nicely inside a frame say for example during an animation well you've got some spare time at the end of a frame and request idle callback is designed to fit into those gaps. It will fire your request idle callback, 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 callback. Am I calling back on a calling back? It will fire your request idle callback when there is some spare time at the end of a frame. And if there's no work at all going on, like say, for example, you're just sitting there reading something, there's nothing going on in the background, then request idle callback will fire, assuming there's one that's been scheduled up. Now, I'm not going to go into a deep dive on request idle callback today. There's documentation. I'll just Google for it. I think you'll probably find uh, a bunch of articles. Hang on, let me find, let me just see if request idle callback. <laughs> well, well, there is a document and it's mine from 2015, as well as the MDN one. So you can go ahead and search for those. Uh, with request idle callback and you'll find them. I'll link them below because I'm good like that. But we can make good use of it. Now what I've got on screen is uh, a bit of a, a, again, it's the usual contrived example but it allows me to discuss something with you. So I've got this box and currently it's green and says important on it. Imagine this was uh, an image that we wanted to lazy load for example uh, or just some status update, something that we're kind of we're, what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and understand this idea that 
it's not essential. This whatever this block represents, this green block is it's not essential right now. So say for example, its default state is to be purple, um, which I will show you just now. So it looks like this. It's doing this countdown. It's doing a countdown like that. And when the countdown hits zero, it becomes important. So we're kind of encoding the idea here that there's a number that goes from 250, in this case, down to zero. And when it gets to zero, we're going to decide it's important. You could say, say for example, it was loading some stocks and shares data, right? It's some kind of timeout that, you know, we're going to get you the latest data in a minute or five minutes or just whenever we can, you know, we're not that bothered about it. All right, cool. So you hopefully you've got that idea inside your head that this is a non-essential piece of work. And when it does become important, we change its color and we put that message inside that says it's now important. So we would go off and like do whatever work was absolutely necessary at that point. Now, the way we can code this up over here is I'm going to use request idle callback to do this. Now, I've got this function here that's called tick. And what tick is going to do is it's going to take the tick count from 250, which is the starting number, down to zero. Um, and when it hits zero, it's going to upgrade the box importance up to that green and it says important, okay? So what it's saying is request an idle callback for tick. So when there's some spare time at the end of a frame, go ahead, uh, fire the tick, decrement tick count, and uh, set that number inside the box, and then request another idle callback for the next time there's some spare time in a frame. Eventually it'll be zero, it'll upgrade the box importance. Okay, hopefully with me so far. Now what happens if we find that we are busy? So I've got a bit of code here that again, we're gonna sort of fake looking busy. And what we've got is this uh, busy wait while loop. So the wait time is somewhere in the range of 13 to 20 milliseconds. So I'm gonna choose a random amount to jitter our wait time. Uh, 16 milliseconds if you recall from the animations uh, video. Link it again, maybe. 16 milliseconds is our window if we want nice and smooth. So we're going somewhere between just under a frame and just over a frame in terms of milliseconds. And uh, all we're doing is we're going into a busy while loop that says, while we're under the wait time, uh, just do, do nothing really. So in a real application, instead of just pretending to be busy, this could be a response or it could be an animation or we could be loading something. So what I'm trying to establish really is that we're gonna put some work onto the main thread. It's some fake work. It could have been something more realistic, but to make the point then it's just faking it for now. And what that's gonna do is it's going to prevent the request I'll call back from firing because there'll be no spare time or occasionally there will be spare time uh, because sometimes it'll be 13 milliseconds and that'll give us a couple of milliseconds to do something. But most of the time, we're probably gonna be above that range and it's gonna slow that decrement right down. And hopefully we'll see that in a moment. So let's go back, we'll refresh. And now you'll see the number's going down, but it's not going down as fast. And I'm gonna record a, a DevTools timeline here on the performance tab and stop that. So what we've got here is we've got this main thread that's super busy doing our uh, looking busy, look busy, look busy, look busy. It's always looking busy, so busy right now. Okay, look at that. So what I've found over here um, is somewhere in here, there is just a little bit of time every so often, there we are to run the tick. So without this, without the, the work, let's go back to here and we're just gonna comment out the, the look busy function. I'm gonna run it again. Okay, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna hit record. Boop. So it, because there is uh, nothing going on inside the frames, at the end of the frame, oh man, come on Paul, there we are. There's always time to run a tick like so, okay? When we introduce the slow down, the look busy, you see that we've got less time to fire our idle callback. So far, so good. So if you find yourself in the situation where you're lazy loading something, or you've got some non-essential work, maybe you're optimizing some data, or you're just generally able to defer some work until some future point, maybe your analytics where, you know, maybe you want to get that data off fairly soon, but you're happy to wait for a little bit until there's some idle time. Okay, that might be a good opportunity to do this kind of work. Now there's one other piece to this story that I wanna cover quickly today, and that was introduced by Philip Walton, one of my colleagues at Google. He came up with the idea of idle until urgent. I'm gonna link it below. What we want to do is we want to 
in some way elevate the importance of this box. So I'm going to reintroduce this look busy function over here. And you see that we're slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Now it may be that, for example, uh, the user clicks some button, say this was the stocks and shares example, um, and maybe they click the button that says, get me the latest stocks and shares value. Well, no longer is it idle time. No longer is it time to relax and chill out. It's become urgent. Uh, it's become important to get that data for the user. Now, what I've got here is I've got an element that's hiding at the bottom of the page. You could imagine, I'm the important section. That's what it says in there. Yeah. You could imagine that that was something a bit different. You could imagine that that was the button that you click, but this could be something that where you scroll and it's an infinite scrolling list. And maybe when you get to that thing, you've got to populate the next part of the DOM. And that's a great time to have preloaded all your data, right? But now you've hit that part of the page. Goodness, you've got to get that data in there. So it's become urgent. So what we're going to do is in this case, we're going to use the arrival of this element to immediately bump the importance of that box up to its important status. So how do we do that? Well, the easiest way uh, is to use an intersection observer. Now, intersection observers are available in Edge and Firefox and Chrome, and they're currently in the Safari tech previews, not Safari 12, but the tech preview. Um, so hopefully they'll arrive at some point. It is also a polyfillable API. Um, it is a little bit unfortunate because it has to use things like uh, get bounding client wrecked, which will trigger layout. Um, so be cautious here, but nonetheless, for the most part, the top end browsers are all getting to the point where they have intersection observers and that's awesome. So what does an intersection observer do for us? It allows us to watch for the arrival of an element by default into the viewport. Uh, we can make it observe uh, elements appearing and disappearing from other parts of the page. Say if you've got an overflow scroll kind of area. In this case, I'm most bothered about that important section that I've got here uh, and when it arrives on screen. So I'm gonna scroll back up to the top and I've got some code that I'm going to introduce here. So I'm going to take a default intersection observer, which takes a callback for entries. And the entries are every time uh, something changes in terms of uh, intersecting with the viewport on something that we're observing, and we'll talk about that in a moment, um, we're going to fire the callback. We're going to see this callback uh, get fired, I should say. And the uh, parameter is the entries, which is things like the the target, how much it's overlapping with the viewport, um, and things like that. Now, it might not just be the viewport, as I say, you can have it track other things. Today, we care about that important section. We care about it appearing in the viewport, and that's what we're gonna track. So, down here, we've uh, got our call to observe, and we're observing our important section. We're saying to the intersection observer, watch the important section. That's all I want you to do. You could observe many elements, you could observe none. It's really up to you. So what happens here? Inside the intersection observer, it's watching for our element arriving into the viewport. We step through all the entries and we say, if the entry that you've got, the target, is our important section, because you could have multiple things that you're observing. Uh, in our case, we know this entry is, if it's got anything, it's going to have one entry in it because we're only observing one thing. But, you know, for tidiness, uh, that's what we've got here. Uh, if the target's the important section and it's intersecting, because you'll get a, a callback fired when it leaves as well as enters. And we wanna check that it is in fact intersecting with the viewport, all good. When that happens, we upgrade the box importance, much as we did up here when the tick count got down to zero. We're gonna do the same thing here. We're just gonna say, when it's intersecting the viewport, immediately bump the box's importance up to the top. All right, so we've marked the box as important. And then the final thing in my particular case is once we've marked the box as important, we can unobserve the important section because we're done. To be fair, you might want to say move that important section somewhere else, or there's a million and one ways you could, you could do this, but hopefully you can see from my particular perspective, once we've marked the box as uh, important, the job is done and we can just tidy up the intersection observer. So what does this do for us over in the code? Well, we still are in fact seeing this slow countdown, but as I scroll, eventually what's going to happen is boop. The intersection observer is firing. It's noticing that the important section has arrived and that's automatically upgrading the box to important. Yay! So there you have it. 
idle. It's the funny one in the group. It's the one that's looking for the gaps, not the thing that's responding to the work that we've been asked to do. Kind of a creative opportunity to say, what work do I not need to do? What work can I defer until later? That's the work I'm going to do in the idle time. This pattern that Philip Walton came up with, this idle until urgent, is a really nice pattern. It says, hey, it's not important to get it done right away, ideally just, you know, whenever you've got chance. But if there's some form of, say, user interaction or it becomes uh, clear that it's now important, just bump its priority right up to the top and get the work done. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you have. Subscribe if you haven't already and ring the little notification bell if you want to know when I'm putting one of these live. And I'll catch you lovely folk on the flip side. When we uh, find the box... Right, that's unfortunate, isn't it? Coffee. It's slightly ruined now, but my wife wrote this. It says it says Paul on it. Why does she? Why does she need to write my name down? Maybe she's forgotten who I am. Who did I marry? I don't know.